Hey guys, Andy Thomas here from Wolf on the Run. Today I'm going to show you all my camping gear that I take with me on the bike. Um, and um, see, see what you think, uh, see what you've got. Um, whether you think it's too much, whether it's not enough, or whether there's something that I'm missing. Um, yeah, so let's, let's get into it and see how it goes. Alright guys, this is my sleeping bag um, before it's compacted. As you can see, it's quite a size as it is, but I, I do like this one. It's um, it's a meter wide. Uh, I like to have some room inside them to move about. I can't be doing with those mummy sleeping bags. They're, they're just too tight for me. Um, as I say, it's a meter wide, and I like to move around inside it. It's rated down to zero degrees. Um, it's a Coleman, which is a decent brand, um, but it's just a hollow fiber. I've looked into the down bags. Um, I can't find a down bag um, that's actually a metre wide, um, so I'm happy with this one. Um, when we go up to Bush um, or the Alpine Forest in Bright, it uh, gets a little bit cold. might drop down minus one, minus two degrees, and sometimes that is just on the borderline. So what I've done is I've bought myself a cotton sleeping bag liner. Uh, that's my bike cover, as you can get some idea, but it does compact down near enough the same size as that, probably not as... A squashed but it would I suppose if you got into another bag but I leave it like that in the garage just so that all the fill inside the fiber it's just it, it don't compress it and squash it and lose it as you can see it packs down pretty small that's my um, bike cover that I showed you so it's pretty much the same height just a little bit a little bit fatter than the but it does go down really compacts pretty well you probably get a bit more out of it if you just put it in a stuffed bag but I'm happy with that and it keeps me nice and warm. All right, this is a sleeping bag liner. Um, it's just a cotton one. But what I've done with this is inside my sleeping bag, I've put a, a couple of toggles at the bottom um, and on the sleeping liner, bag liner, I've put a couple of little loops. So when it's stretched out at the bottom, I hook that to one side of the, the bag and that to the other. So basically I'm not twisting up my feet inside you know when I'm turning and tossing around inside it fits straight up to the corners and it doesn't move and that'll probably give me another three or four degrees extra on my sleeping bag which is perfect for what I need in that other bag and while we're on sleeping this is the best $12 I ever spent it's a self-inflating pillar um, just under the valve on the side there and it just lets you just throw it into your tent when you set up and uh, it blows itself up and it's so so comfortable as I say it's the best $12 I ever spent I do like my comfort um, so this is a it's not an actual Thermarest one but you've probably seen the Thermarest this you could buy three of these for the price of the Thermarest it's um, All the aluminium aircraft, aircraft aluminium poles. You got your stretch canvas that goes over the top of it, and then you got these that are the actual feet. So it sits about 100 mil off the floor. Um, you got your rails either side, which are these blue ones, and uh, stretch that canvas out, and then you got all the feet. As I say, it's pretty pretty comfortable. Um, but I do also on top. Carry this monster, it's a little bit big, but I still, at my age, you need your comfort. Um, this is just a self inflating mattress, it's 25 mil thick. Um, and again, I put that on top of there, and um, yeah, it's nice and comfortable. It's like four star hotel, right? I would class it as. Yeah, I'm happy with that. This is my tent. Well, this is not the tent. This is just a piece of, um, it's like Tyvek felt. I put that underneath the, the tent. It's breathable felt. So it um, it can stop the dirt coming onto the bottom of the tent. It's also breathable and it stop any damp coming through. So yeah, it's pretty handy just to throw down. It folds up to nothing, so I carry that. Again, Coleman. Um, this is a two-man tent. I believe it's called a DOGZIC which is basically, it stands up on its own. Um, the fly sheet and the internal um, sleeping compartment, it's all in one. 
you just feed the three poles through, hook the poles in and it stands up on its own. Don't need to peg it down, it's really quick. If you're at the side of the road and you want to sleep, uh, yeah, pop it up, three minutes, bang, get in, you're sleeping. So that's a two man, that gives you enough room to um, put your gear inside it, you know, your, your motorcycle clothing, your helmets. If, you, if you're on a, you know, like a, a trip out for a three or four nights, um, if not, I have this little one man, um, this is just a little hiking tent, um, this is really really small, it's um, 700, uh, sorry, 70 centimetres inside um, by 2.1 and it folds up to absolute nothing. So that's ideal if you're um, just a one nighter and you just want to throw it up for the quick gear, but that you have to set the inside up which is all mesh and uh, if it's a nice day, nice night, you can just leave the mesh up. If not, um, then you put the fly sheet over. But I do prefer the other ones, I say, because it's an all-in-one system. Um, poles, nice and light for that. Pegs, aluminium. So that alone probably weighs about one and a half, two kilos. It's nothing. I do also carry a tarp, which is a three meter by three meter tarp. Um, cut the poles. Um, pegs, all the guy ropes inside there as well. So this is like, yeah, say three meter, three meter. So basically, uh, if you've got your, your, your three or four nights out and you've got your tent up, because it's just enough to sleep in, keep your gear in, you need somewhere to sit and cook if the weather's a little bit bad. So I just stick that uh, tarp at the side, just in a triangle shape, pole at the front, pole at the back, and guide it out. Um, the poles, really light. They all get stuffed into my, my bag dry bag that goes onto the back of the bike. I stick that on the seat as well as using my top box and panniers for everything else. Um, yeah, just a bit more protection for the elements. Five or six hours in the saddle, I believe you need a sit down. So yeah, the Allenox chair, it's not cheap, but it's bloody comfortable. Um, you can sit back in it, recline in it, sit forward, eat your dinner off it, whatever you want to do. It's a great little chair. This I call my emergency sack. <laughs> and yeah, I'll show you why. I normally take normal food, um, tin food, some bacon, eggs and whatever, but this is just some standard... Um, dehydrated meals and I keep them in there they've got a sell by date but they last for about three or four months so I just keep them in there and in case of emergencies you never know a couple of straps a bit of rope a water bottle a water container just a cheap one that folds up into nothing um, I do carry a dehydration pack on my back uh, that gives me three liters of water um, so I, I take water with me, but you never know. So in an emergency, or if you're out a long time on the water, you know, you need extra water. I've got this Catadine water for purification system. It's just a little pump. So basically on there, you can see that I've got one marked as dirty, one marked as clean. Um, the clean end goes into the water, sorry, the clean end goes into your water bottle that I attach to the top of there with that plug um, and then you put that end into the, the river, stream, whatever, lake. Um, this is like a float system so it just drops below the water service, surface, um, connect it to here and pump it and it's 99.9 .9 something percent purific purif purified water, that's if I can say. And yeah, I've drunk it and I've actually drunk the water straight out the muddy river from this, which is, yeah, it's like um, brown, dirty, yeah, you can't see through it, but I've drunk the water and survived to tell the tale. That's a great little unit. And this, because you go into the woods, and you know what bears do in the woods, I haven't used this yet, but um, it's ready to be. I did have a, a little, like, um... What do they call it? A little hoe, shovel, whatever you want to call it, spade. Um, but recently got this one. Um, it's 
It's got a little saw edge on it. It's also you can use it as a pick or a peck, whatever you want to call it. And as I say, when you're in the woods, you need to go, you need to be like a bear, and bears do in the woods, unfortunately, so do we. Why are we talking about water? I've got this idea. Um, these one litre bottles, aluminium bottles, um, the cork on. I've got these drinks containers, they did have straps so you could carry them over your shoulder but I've, I've lined them with some plastic piping um, just to give it the rigidity um, and I'm going to find a way of putting these onto the bike so that I can carry extra three or four, I think I've got another one somewhere, three or four litres of water um, so we're going to make a frame for that and find somewhere to put them onto the bike. Everybody knows what that is. You pull up on the campsite, um, it's been raining and your bike's so heavy with all your gear, uh, you just need that, you can buy them to put, you know, actually fit onto your side stand, um, but that's just a piece of plywood that I cut um, and you just throw it onto the floor, put your, your stand of your bike onto it and it gives that extra bit of pressure down um, so you, your stand doesn't sink into the mud and your bike will stay up. So that's basically my little emergency kit. This is my fishing gear. This is a great little telescopic rod. These are a couple of bank sticks or rod rests. Um, the tops are inside here. So they just fit onto there like that and then that obviously carries your rod. You've all seen them. Um, a fishing reel and handle, um, a gaff because some of the fish that we catch have got decent spikes on them so you just pick them out of the water with that, a um, pair of pliers, some weights, some shots and some hooks and this now is a digital scale because I caught a yellowfin not long back up in Turumbury or Torumbury um, which is up to, on the, the well way up north, just be, it's on the New South Wales border actually and I caught a yellowfin that I reckon was around about four and a half, five kilos and nobody was there to witness it uh, and they was going yeah, 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 they don't grow that big, they, you know, they, but it was in a weir um, and it was it was a decent sized fish so now I've bought myself a scale to prove whether it was two kilos, three and a half kilos, four kilos and at the time my phone was flat so I couldn't take a picture of it either. But now I've got this and I'm going to make sure my phone is charged up all the time. Evidence, that's what I need. Push them to one side. Okay, there's the other one, the fourth one. This is just part of my kitchen gear. It's my ground coffee, um, my bag, that's got cooking oil, I normally get tomato ketchup or bean and pom, some HP sauce, um, I do like my sauce. In here I have, no idea what that is, I have some uh, salt and pepper, just in some little containers, and that just stays in my cooking food all the time, my cooking gear. I'll go on to another I'll talk to you first about my little bits and pieces um, when we do go bush. I carry a, a Mora knife, um, which is a carbon blade, um, nice and sharp, keep it sharp. And while you're sitting around the campfire, if it's not sharp, I've got a strop and um, a diamond bladed, um, diamond encrusted uh, sharpener, that's the word I'm looking for. So yeah, you just obviously sharpen your knife and then on your strop afterwards, which is the strop's a piece of leather, just takes a bird off the edge. But yeah. Also, a little multi-tool that I've got in there, which has got a knife, it's got a little hammer, a little axe, for just in case. I've not actually used that yet, that's uh, something I picked up the other day. And silky gone boy, um, which is ideal for cutting your firewood, 
Um, if you're going through a trail somewhere and there's a little tree falling down or something like that, um, you can't go round, you've got to go through. You can cut yourself a, you know, a way through, cut a piece out of the tree and carry on with your travels. So it's, it's nice, to, it's handy to have. All right, we're going to my kitchen gear. As it says on the box, fire kit. So everything you need in there to uh, get yourself a fire going. Um, I've got a couple of cigarette lighters. I've got my fire steel. These are some little cotton pads that um, you get a tea light candle, um, melt a couple of those and um, half a jar of Vaseline petroleum jelly into a tin over your camp stove. Um, get it all melted, mix it all up and dip these in. I use my fish employers, dip these in, soak them, leave them to dry and then they go pretty hard and then you crack the corner when you get to, to your bush campfire. Crack the corner, light it with your lighter, and that will burn for about four, three quarters of an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, um, just to get your fire going, basically, if, you, if your wood's a little bit wet or whatever, or if you, you could probably boil a cup of water on just one of those. We'll actually do an experiment and try one of them, see how long it does work. Um, I did keep it in some foil, but they come out. And this is just a bit of lint. I carry the lint um, at the tumble dryer. So, you know, if you've run out of gas, your fire stick, you just drop up your fire stick onto there, boom, and it's instantaneous. You've got a light straight away for your fire. So basically, it's just to get your fire going. A little bit of help to get that fire going. Some people could um, feather sticks and, and whatever. I, I prefer the easier way, to be honest. This is a little... They call them penny stoves, but this one's not... Actually, doesn't use a penny. It's... Um, different design it's got an open top inside it's got a second wall like a fluted wall inside it um, there's loads and loads of designs of these on YouTube I use this guys and I thought this was a fantastic idea I've made a few additions so the top of the coat can you can drop that on top so basically that makes like a simmering like on the Tangier um, so you just got a little flame coming out so you don't use all the heat of this and inside there and if that's too much heat of that inside and this I made a little cap that goes on so you're just using the outside and then when you're finished drop that on top and the bottom out of the can just drop that on top top and it snuffs it out so basically it puts out the, um, the fire for you sometimes it will leak through and you need to give it a little bit of extra help but it does work um, little bottle of meths this is just a piece of aluminium flashing off a window which I just cut down uh, doubled it over so basically made a made a little tripod uh, and then I put the mesh on top like that so you can you know you can put whatever size pan pot cup on there and it still works I also carry three temp pigs so the temp pigs you knock them into the ground stand them like that around you can and then that makes yourself a little cooking um, cooking stand so we'll, I'll, I'll show you how that works as well we'll go into the, the soil afterwards and uh, I'll show you how that works kitchen sink This is basically uh, just a fold up sink. Um, it's got a couple of handles. As I say, that piece of rope that I showed you earlier, I have tied it around there and threw it into the water, I pulled it out, and you can use that for washing yourself, washing your plates, your pots. Um, yeah, it's completely waterproof and it folds up next to nothing. So it's ideal and handy to keep inside your, your gear. Um, this is my little clothesline, um, just a piece of cord. And I've got some small clamps that I keep rather than pegs because the tension on these are fantastic. So once it's on in your clothes, they're not going to blow off. They're, they're, they're there for good. They're going to dry. This is just a semi-waterproof old glass case, which I carry my globe in for, you know, bulb for inside the, uh, the tent. And a few batteries. Um, batteries for the scales of the way in the fish. Batteries for this. Just a couple of spare batteries. 
multi pot inside there instant coffee uh, sugar uh, and then in the top one I keep a couple of tea bags I don't drink a lot of tea um, I do like my coffee hence me showing you that ground coffee earlier I carry a French press because in the morning there's nothing better than a nice strong cup of coffee and I, I just take my coffee black no sugar straight down bang happy days your tin tin mug um, I carry that one because you can carry that you can burn that on top of the stove um, you can put it on an open fire if you want to keep you you know you have a drink and it's cold just drop it by the fire keep it warm and surprisingly enough the handle doesn't never get that warm which is pretty good pretty good uh, still be older um, advertising my business um, little sponge cleaner and a bit of camp soap cooking pot, small pot, if you're just boiling a cup of water or a bit of soup or something, stove, that's a pot, pot. so if I'm boiling water up to do the dehydrated meals I'll fill that full of water and that's uh, enough to make that meal and a cup of tea, a coffee I should say. This is my camp stove, it's got the, the fold up foot for the bottom, so if you're on level ground that drops on there, little pocket rocket folds out, screws on the top of there so you've, all, you've all seen that sort of system before, it's stand, pretty standard plastic plate nice and light my utensils little plastic spoon, a fold up fork I don't like the sporks to be honest, I prefer the, uh, the fold up fork, just a normal fork. Um, this is a titanium spoon which is ideal for getting inside those um, ready meal bags. Uh, so you can get, just pour the water inside them, stir it up, let it set and you get straight in rather than dirty in dishes and whatever. A spatula for my frying pan, um, bacon, eggs, whatever you want to do. This is a pair of tongs, which I find is ideal if you're you know, just picking up stuff in the pot rather than, rather than using a spatula or whatever, you turn your bacon over. It's just, just a cheap set I found, picked up. And a nice sharp knife, um, whether you're you know, cutting up meat, steak, whatever. Um, and you can use that obviously for you know, your bush camping if you want. I just keep it inside there, which keeps it nice and out the way. Bit of dishcloth, bowl, frying pan. This is just a, a seat off an old uh, base off an old seat, like a director's chair that I cut out. I haven't used it yet. I just thought it'd be handy. I keep it inside there because it stops this pan, this bowl, scratching my frying pan. So let, yeah, that, that's all it's for now. But let's say you can use it to kneel on, or you know, at least it's there if you need. Have a little chopping board. To say if you're cutting up your potatoes or, or mushrooms or anything for your fry up. Um, yeah, just a chopping board. I've got a windshield, just an aluminium fold up windshield that will go around your gas or your little uh, penny stove. Um, if it is windy, that is. This is a little. Just, it's a bigger chopping board, it actually came as a set, so I'll keep that as a chopping board. But this, if you're just a little bit, this is a tripod, just a small tripod. So basically, I just screw that onto there. And if you're sitting in your chair, uh, it's just too low to the ground to get down to put your, your stove onto. You can put your stove on here and, you know, you make your food. So you're just leaning over it and it's not, you're actually on the floor. It just gives you that extra bit of height. Um, so yeah, it's just that little bit of helping hand. And there's no weight in it. I just cut another one of those circles I showed you earlier for the, um, the stand. Um, cut it out and just sank and glued um, a quarter inch nut in there, which, which will take a tripod. You can actually put it onto your bigger tripod if you wanted to, your camera tripod. So it's up here if you want to do something up here, you know, or put your laptop on, or your iPad, or sort out your phone, or whatever. Um, you know, the facilities are there. This, just a bit of rope that I carry 
that's it that's it but I have got a tub of aluminium foil I think that's just for emergency so if you, you know if you're idle you don't want to get all your pots and pans out you just wrap wrap your food your steak your fish whatever you've caught um, you know obviously not going to catch steak but if you catch a fish you can just wrap it in the, the foil and throw it into the fire and you haven't got to mess around just eat it straight out of the foil I haven't used it yet um, but I do carry that just in case okay guys so <clears throat> I know we have to keep clean as well sometimes <laughs> while we're traveling along so this is my keep yourself clean as I said bears need to do it in the woods so do we so I carry a toilet roll take the center out of the toilet roll the cardboard so it just flattens down a little bit more um, so baby wipes um, yeah sometimes you just you know you've got no time to find a shower or whatever so you just need to freshen up they're ideal um, in my bag here I've got some mosquito repellent um, hand soap sanitizer uh, little toothbrush toothpaste um, some shampoo and some talc um, because if you do get your monkey butt, it talc helps. Um, yeah, there's another glasses wipe there. Um, and then the microfiber towel. This I'm amazed at. Um, I stopped at a, a, a motel and they didn't supply towels at the motel. Uh, this is only like 900 by 300 mil wide. And I thought, yeah, normally I just wash my face with it, wipe, you know, give myself a wipe down. And I thought, this is the only towel I've got now. I need to have a shower. So I had a shower, used my toiletries. And this, for the size of it, was absolutely amazing. It's a microfiber towel, as I say. It, um, it's not very big, but I dried myself off with this after the shower, and this wasn't even wet. I couldn't, I have no idea where the moisture went, but it's fantastic. But if you do get it soaking, um, it comes in like a little mesh bag, so you just stick it into the mesh bag, and basically tie it to the back of your bike, and the wind blow through it, and try it out but yeah I was amazed get yourself a microfiber towel they are amazing okay guys I'll say I do like to carry a decent pair of hiking boots um, I might take my thongs flip-flops whatever you call them some guys have crocs but I do like to take my boots decent pair of boots um, just if you're out you know it's all around the camp if you're on a campsite but if you're out in the bush, Alpine Forest, a decent pair of boots is, oh, I like the way here, I like that. Um, just this in the bag, I just tend to put all my food in there and stuff sack and just get that. This, this had been me for about a week, clothes, call me a scruff, whatever, but I can make do with this. Um, just keep this in a roll bag just to keep them dry. So basically, a couple of decent pairs of socks, a couple of light t-shirts, a couple of fleece, these these like um, these are hiking gear, so this is regatta, but it's got like a lining inside which makes it um, really light, waterproof, windproof, I wouldn't say waterproof, showerproof, um, um, but really light, packed down to nothing, There's a couple of decent pairs of woolly socks. Um, this is the same, this is a Cedarberg, this is a little bit warmer than that one. Um, but just hiking gear basically. And then a couple of pair of the lightweight hiking pants. These are both zip-offs, um, again Cedarberg, decent gear, it's, you know you want that. You zip off the legs and you've got yourself a pair of shorts, there's no need to carry pants, trousers, shorts. Just, yeah, these are really light, as I say, they roll up to nothing. And the best thing about it, they, um, you get them wet, within seconds they're dry again. Alright guys, so on the bike, um, I carry in this little bag on the side rack there. I carry my first aid kit. Um, a few essentials in there. And on this side, normally I've got... Um, if it's winter time, I'll carry a pair of winter gloves. If it's summertime, I'll probably carry a pair of thermo uh, sorry, thin gloves. Um, also, I just ride in my normal gloves, my all year round ones, but I do keep them just in case. Um, inside there, there's a small compressor, 12 volt compressor that plugs into the 
the back of the bike there if I uh, need to do a tyre change. There's also um, a punch repair kit inside there. On my tank bag, inside the small pocket there, I've got a 12 volt charger, chapstick, pair of ear defenders, ear plugs inside there. I normally got my sunglasses, um, normal reading glasses. I do carry my head torch in there because um, if you pull up at camp, um, you know, when it's dark, that's the first thing you want to get out of rather than trying to root through your panniers or your bags, trying to find where have I put my torch. Um, cloth, wipe your, uh, your visor, um, a few just uh, wipes, alcohol wipes, biro, um, and in the bottom pouch there, um, some screen clean. Uh, if you boys it again and a, a microfiber wide towel um, on the back end there I'll carry three litres of um, fuel um, for just in case um, in my tool tube here I carry let's see if I can get you in right there's a little little bag full of bits which I'll show you in in a second um, some cable ties, uh, a decent size spanner, adjustable spanner, um, that will adjust to the biggest nut on the bike which is your back wheel, um, so yeah if I do get a puncher at least I can get the, the wheel off. Um, these are rim protectors that um, if you're taking the wheel off you don't scratch all your paint off because they're black painted top wheels, rims, uh, you don't scratch all your paint. Uh, and a pair of tyre tire levers. Um, inside there's a can of chain lube. That's Penrite, good as you make. And a small bottle of 52,000 uses WD-40. So that's what I keep in there. In this little bag, if I can get into it. I'm trying to do it one-handed. It's just a normal bit of uh, PTFE tape, um, fibre tape, Teflon, a couple of small cable ties, different um, amp fuses, um, the 30 amp ones I'll keep a couple of spare of them because the main fuse on the bike is a 30 amp. Um, roll of tape, some connectors in there, uh, multi screwdriver so you've got like flat head one side and a Phillips head the other um, bit of duct tape everybody's got duct tape um, some more connectors clamp together, clamp together connectors and a little multi tool it's got a um, pair of pliers on a little adjustable spanner knife screwdrivers yeah just a general thing all right guys fantastic thank you very much for watching as I say, that's all my camping gear. Uh, let me know your thoughts, um, whether you think I'm carrying too much, whether I need some, I'm missing something uh, important and vital. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll do a video of uh, some of the items, making the, um, the cotton pads for the fire. I'll show you how the, uh, the little alcohol stove works, and, um, and then I'll show you it all going on to the bike. Thanks guys, fantastic.